Welcome everybody to this tutorial on how to select indexers in the graph network. We have received from the community the feedback that selecting indexers may not be the easiest thing in the network, so this is why we have created this extensive video tutorial to help you with everything you need to know when you want to delegate to an indexer. So if you are a delegator and you haven't delegated to an indexer right now, or if you want to switch indexers because you are not satisfied with the performance of your present indexer, this video is just the right thing for you to watch. All right, so let's start with the basics. First of all, let us navigate over to the network page of the graph. This is the official UI, which you can use to delegate. And let's have a quick look at the network page, what you can see over there and what kind of information you can gain from this website. So first of all, you can see the total amount of GRT that is staked right now in the network. And you can see the token supply at this present time. So at the moment, 25% of all GRT are staked in the network. Now you can see the indexing rewards in total that all the indexers have generated. And you can see how much indexers have received and how much delegators have received from these indexing rewards. You can also see that the query fees right now are relatively low. This is because querying is right now not live, but it will eventually become live and we should see this number increase. So this is the overview you can view or see from the network page. So let's have a look at the participants page. Now, if you navigate to participants, you can see the really interesting statistics about indexers. Right here, you can see all the indexers that are active in the network. And really interesting for us is the effective reward cut. Now, when you want to compare indexers, it may not be the most useful idea to compare them simply based on query fees or simply based on indexing reward cuts, but you should use the effective reward cut to compare indexers. This is because you cannot compare indexers by indexing rewards alone, because for example, let's have a look at Framework Labs and Figment. Um, Framework Labs has an indexing reward cut of 50%. Figment from Lemninscape has an indexing reward cut of 79%. But you can see from the effective reward cut that Framework Labs offers you a reward cut of 13% and Figment offers you a reward cut of 15%. So the lower this number is, the more beneficial to you. So you should try to select and find an indexer with a possibly low number in that area because it is better and more profitable for you to have such a kind of indexer. I should rather explain, first of all, what all these numbers mean. So query fee cut is when an indexer serves a particular query to a data consumer, the indexer is paid in GRT tokens by the data consumer. So data consumers can, for example, be Uniswap or other customers. And as a delegator, if you delegate to an indexer, you will receive a percentage of the query fee cut. So for example, if the indexer offers you 50%, this means the indexer will take 50% of the query fees generated from your delegation and you will receive the other 50%. Again, then we have the indexing reward cuts. This means that the protocol is incentivizing indexers to work in the ecosystem and you will receive a predefined percentage of these indexing rewards. So this is again, as I already told you, have a look at the effective reward cut and the lower the number, the better for you. Then there is the cooldown. What a cooldown is, is that a indexer can voluntarily set a cooldown and it is the parameter cooldown, which defines for the indexer how long they are unable to change or make changes to the query fee cut and the indexing reward cut. So when evaluating indexers, it is really important not to take only the reward cut and query fee cut into percentages into account, but also to have a look at the parameters cooldown. If the cooldown is set to zero days, it means that the indexer is allowed to change the parameters whenever they want, which is 
for you as a delegator, not the ideal situation. In practice, some indexers may initially set a very low percentage to attract new delegators with favorable conditions and an attractive APY. But as soon as uh, the indexer has received enough delegations or they have maxed out their delegation capacity, it means that they will make changes to their parameters. So for you as a delegator, the inherent risk with this is that a not so trustworthy indexer could switch to a 100% reward cut and so that you will no longer receive any rewards which you want to avoid. And the longer the parameters cool down of an indexer, uh, the greater your protection from unexpected changes to reward cut and query fee cut percentages. All right, let's have a look at stake owned, stake delegated and the stake allocated. Stake owned means um, this is the stake the indexer has deposited into the protocol and this stake is subject to slashing. So if the indexer is misbehaving for whatever reason, their stake can be slashed. Stake delegated means this is the number that one indexer has received from all the delegators. And the stake allocated is just the sum of these two, the total stake that the indexer is actively allocating towards the subgraph they are indexing or the subgraphs they are indexing. All right, so have a look at this. If you scroll down, what is also important is that you find an indexer that is not over delegated. This indexer, for example, is right now over delegated, so they do not have any available delegation capacity, which is indicated by this red dot. If we expand the table, you can see the rewards the indexer has received right now in total. So these are the total rewards one indexer has received during the entire time they have been active in the graph network. These are the basics. So it's really important when you try to find an indexer to really have a look at, at the official UI and to compare the numbers and to see if you can find an attractive indexer. But to get really deep into the subject matter and to really compare indexers on a granular level, you will have to use a couple of tools. So I will walk you through a couple of tools which I find really interesting, which I find really helpful and maybe they are helpful for you as well. So first of all, we have the dashboard over at graphlets.io. And this dashboard gives you a great overview of each indexer's historic ROIs. So you can see if an indexer is active or not, for example. And the delegation ratio shows you if an indexer may become over-delegated soon or is already over-delegated. So the next dashboard would be Oracle Miner. When you click on Oracle Miner, you just have to input the address of one particular indexer and click on Submit. And then you see all the statistics of one particular indexer. So for example, if you're interested, if your indexer has already closed their allocation or not, have a look at the dashboard. So another website that is really useful is stakemachine.com. It offers you a wide variety of statistics about the graph network, but it can also be used to have a detailed look at your indexer. To do so, simply navigate to stakemachine.com, click on the graph overview and click on indexers. And then the only thing you will have to do is type in the address of your indexer and select a time frame, for example, the last seven days. And here, for example, you can see how many rewards in GRT your indexer has earned per hour on average. So another really useful tool you can use is graphscan.io and for example it has this inbuilt calculator which is really neat. So for example you plan on delegating let's say 1000 GRT. You can click on insert your number of GRT and click on calculate and once the query has run it will show you approximately how many GRT you will earn per day if you delegate 1000 GRT. This is really interesting and you should be able to get a approximate number of the GRT you can earn with one particular indexer per day. For example, if you're interested in delegating to Protofire and if you have a stack of 5000 GRT, you will be able approximately 
to earn 1.35 GRT per day. Now this website is also really useful for comparing indexers. You can always have a look at the real percentage of the indexing reward cut and the indexing reward cut. For example, P2P offers an indexing reward cut of 14.7% and an a query fee cut of 8%. And then you always have the real percentage, which you can then use to compare indexers with each other. All right, so let us jump to another really important subject when it comes to selecting and choosing indexers. Now, this is especially important because it is not a quantitative metric that you can evaluate. This has to do with indexer trustworthiness and reputation. So this is also written down in the article, which we are going to link to in the show notes. If you choose your indexer, it is really advisable that you do your due diligence on the indexer. So what is really important, and for me personally, I absolutely want the indexer to live and breathe the graph protocol. I want this indexer to be really active in the community, and I want this indexer simply to be active in the protocol. Now there are other indexers, there are bigger indexers, for example, who may see the graph network and the graph protocol simply as one network amongst many, which I do not want. So the graph is going to be really complex, especially once curation is live. So I believe that those indexers will have an advantage that are absolutely really actively involved within the protocol. Now, what I recommend you to do is that you simply reach out to your indexer and see if they are active in the community, if they are open, if they can be reached and if you can contact them if you have any questions. Now, this is really helpful because it will allow you to ask, for example, one indexer about their indexing strategy, which should give you some important insights whether or not the indexer is something for you and whether or not the indexer will be involved for a rather long time in a protocol, which is also important. Now, what I really want to stress with this video is that, of course, you can select indexers purely based on APY, but it may not always be the best idea and the best decision. So, for example, if you filter graphscan.io, the dashboard over there, based on APY, for example, here you have an indexer without a name tag or anything like that with an approximate APY of almost 90%. So what will happen is that people or lesser experienced delegators will delegate to this particular indexer and after a couple of days they will change something about their reward cut. So this is really problematic because it gives you the impression that these indexers are really highly attractive but it could happen that they change their metrics from one day to another, leaving you with opportunity costs because you are no longer earning any delegation rewards and you have simply made a wrong delegation decision. So instead of purely comparing your indexers based on APY, it is really recommended that you take APY into consideration, but then you switch over and evaluate the trustworthiness of your indexer that you want to delegate to. So if if an indexer is not active in the community, really, really, really make sure that you can contact the indexer through other channels if you have any questions. All right, so that's about it. This was a lengthy video, but I hope you have enjoyed this video and that you have now a better understanding on what metrics you can use to select an indexer and what metrics you can use to better compare indexers with each other. So thank you very much for watching and happy delegating.